Picture this. It's New Year's Eve in the Soviet Union, 1957. You're a law-abiding teenager growing up in the icy bosom of the Cold War. It's a strange time to be alive. One month earlier, your country sent a dog named Laika on a one-way trip to space. The future seems probably not ideal, but that's no bother. It's time to unwrap your New Year's gift because Christmas is kind of banned. What could it be? A Lubitel twin lens reflex medium format camera by Lomo, one of the most common amateur cameras in the USSR. You're totally stoked. This thing has a pair of sweet glass lenses and a plastic fantastic body that will rock steady by your side as long as you don't drop it down the Yasolsky salt deposit in Michelevka. Fast forward 67 years later, you're now at the ripe age of 81. Your country was dismantled. The world seemingly has turned over in almost every conceivable way, but Leica's bones still float through the stars. And Lomo somehow still exists, though now they're a bunch of Austrians. And your dear sweet Lubitel is back on the shelves, the last bastion of a bygone era anchoring you to the strange world we call planet Earth. The kind of photography that would become part of the human being. Press a button and have the picture. Welcome to In An Instant, I'm your host, Benny Bagalubis, and today we're dancing to the offbeat drum of the Lubitel 166 Plus by Lomography, a revival camera with an 80 year history that the modern Lomography company has slightly whimsified and further conveniencified for the modern medium format or 35 millimeter photo forger. Let's take a look at one of its key distinguishing features from the foreign land of Arizona, USA. All right, so I'm coming to you now from Route 66, shooting the Lubitel 166 Plus. Yesterday I rolled into Seligman, Arizona after a day of just pure gray skies. I was like, oh my God, I can't believe my luck. Uh, I was driving three hours just to catch the sunset, um, but there didn't appear to be any sunset in sight until I arrived and the sky opened up, if just for a moment. And uh, yesterday I was shooting the Lubitel 166 in its 35 millimeter mode. Now, when I heard that this was a dual format camera, I thought, okay, Lomo, like, I'm sure you can just shove a 35 millimeter canister in here. But no, this camera truly was designed for 35 millimeter and 120. There's a small set of accessories that you use to fit a 35 millimeter canister in here, including a custom take up spool, uh, an adapter for the 35 millimeter roll, a little plastic pressure plate. And it's not like many scenarios where you use 35 millimeter in a 120 camera where you have to rewind it back into the canister in the dark or anything. It actually has a rewind knob built into the camera that connects to the 35 millimeter roll. This is really an ingenious design that I absolutely wasn't expecting. I wasn't expecting how practical it was to use both formats in this camera, and it most certainly is. You can even remove the top finder like you can do in many TLRs to insert a transparency onto the viewfinder so that you can actually frame accurately with 35. And with this look, you're of course getting these sprockets. A lot of you know I'm a sprocketeer myself. You are shooting vertically, so it's a little bit narrow of a composition to be using with a 75 millimeter lens, but you can use it sideways. I don't find that it's very easy to hold a TLR sideways. You know, you're, you're looking at it like this, and that's just not really possible. You can use the sport finder so you can look through the viewfinder like that, but I, you know, that's not for me. So today I came from Seligman all the way over to Holbrook, which is home of the famous Wigwam Motel and many iconic sites of Route 66. This stretch of Arizona is one of my favorites. So now I'm gonna press on down the road and I'll see you guys back in the studio. Upon further review of my mini Route 166 Plus journey, I was definitely happy with the performance of this tiny workhorse. The lens proved to be as sharp as rumored. The Luby's triplet glass 75 millimeter lens was a real boon upon its initial introduction in the late 40s. Though this camera was intended for amateurs, it was elevated above toy camera status thanks to Lomo's big optical swing, a lens that even in the hands of an untrained fool could produce a clear image. As a trained fool, I found it really fun to work with. While it certainly is sharp in certain areas, there's still a lomographic quality to the lensing, and smearing can be seen in certain areas of optical imprecision. 
The lens ranges in shutter speeds from bulb to 1 250th of a second and has an aperture range from f22 to as wide as f45, which is not particularly fast and becomes a bit limiting in lower light situations. I used a tripod with the Luby far more than expected, but I'd say if you're more prone to daylight dalliances of the photographic kind, it would hardly be a hindrance. There are a few other major distinguishing traits to the Lubitel that stood out to me as someone who has tried a lot of different medium format cameras over the years. The Luby is really small and really light. While I was traveling with it in Arizona, it occurred to me that with just this and a Polaroid camera, I could really have a limber kit for trips especially with its dual compatibility with 35 millimeter film. In fact, one week later, I decided to roll with just that duo on a short trip to San Francisco and found that other than the Lubitel's aperture limitations, it was perfectly workable for general use and the images were clean enough that they could fit within my portfolio without sticking out or looking quote unquote Lomo, which is the broad expectation that Lomography products are a little wonky, plastic nacious or off kilter. But in this case, Lomo literally just means designed by Soviets who stole technology from Germans and sometimes did a good job with their creations. Its featherweight disposition does have some caveats as you cannot gain such drastic portability without also losing some conveniences. One such trade-off is the waist level finder, which projects a pretty small image onto the ground glass. Though it is aided by a split micro prism and a Fresnel screen, both of which were not on the vintage models, when compared to the finders on more common Japanese or German TLRs, the more compact size is very noticeable. And it's much easier on the eyes to look down into say a Mamiya C330 than the Lubitel. But then also consider the ridiculous scale and weight differences of those cameras and you'll see why someone in 2024 would choose to bop around with a Luby instead of haul around a chonk flex. The finder on the Lubington actually more closely resembles a 4x4 TLR, like the baby Roly Flex or Yashica 44, which used 127 film. And they're not that different in size either. So it's pretty amazing you're getting a 6x6 image on the lubes when you take that into account. The Ruby Luby is indeed a modernized Soviet product with its unique addition of 35 millimeter compatibility that we talked about earlier. When you shoot medium format film in the Lubitel, you have to wind the film as you look through a cleverly unsheathable red window that for the most part protects modern 120 film from exposure and fogging with occasional leaks to be expected. You arrive at the next frame number and then seal it back up. 35 millimeter film doesn't have backing paper, so a red window is impossible to use, and thus they've geniusly designed a separate pre-measured winding system for 35 that lets you crank until a dot appears. You can take your exposure, then wind again until you see another dot. This is very reminiscent of my favorite Lomo camera, the Sprocket Rocket. In both instances, you not only have the dot system for winding 35, but also a separate unpaired shutter on the lens itself. It was quite surreal to operate this lens because although the camera body and components are new, the lens system is almost identical in feel and optics to its 70 year old forefathers on the original USSR cameras. I own a couple of Sputniks, which are triple lens reflex Lubitels from the 50s intended for medium format stereo photography, and the lens and shutter feel so similar to the new camera, it's pretty trippy. This camera manages to be a faithful spawn of the past while neatly being updated with some bells and whistles, which are my favorite two kinds of sounds. One bell and potentially one whistle to mention is the flash sync, which is actually a pretty crazy feature and is not something I realized this camera had. I own like 10 TLRs and none of them have a hot shoe. I think you could probably count on one finger how many TLRs have this convenient flash option. Real nice. The multi-formattedness of the Lubalicious also extends to 645 which is another medium format size you can shoot in it with a separate red window to match. Now let's go to the segment that killed Lennon. Pros and cons. Luby Dooby, we got some pros. Sharp and as small as a tack. The Lubitel demands to be brought around with you on adventures because of its lightweight form factor. And you're not gonna experience much of a trade-off with optics either as the lens remains plenty sharp, especially stop down and dual format compatibility. This was genuinely the biggest surprise in using this camera. The dual format thing isn't a gimmick. It's a practical function, and it was really fun to shoot vertical 35 millimeter sprocket shots in here. And cons, small finder, not the end of the world. And of course you have a pop-up magnifier and a split prism to help with achieving critical focus, all really vital tools. But overall, it still is a bit of an adjustment from your average 
thicker TLR. And rarity. Lomography does not produce this camera very frequently. The beginning of 2024 is the first time in years that has even been in stock, which is why I produced this episode. And it sounds like it'll be hard to grab after it sells out again. But this camera also did exist for 70 years, so there are other secondhand means of acquiring one, uh, whether you get an updated Lomo version or a classic Lubitel 2, which has many of the same charms. Final bit of housekeeping is a matter of the price. A new Lubitel is $400, which I think anyone would argue is reasonable for a legit medium format camera like this. And of course you could grab a vintage one for less money with the trade-off being that the older models can't shoot 35 millimeter, don't have a hot shoe and don't have the added focusing aids on the ground glass. And much like the human body, we'll be more prone to failure due to age. Well, thanks a whole heck of a lot for watching In An Instant. Go Luby Band Booby on that subscribe button. Stay tuned for more reviews, shoots, breakdowns, and all things instant. 